race cars are the sole reason for our existence. No matter what anybody says, cars are not just another form of transportation to get us from point A to point B. Sure, many cars have their boring models for everyday consumers, but you and I, we are a different breed. And luckily, manufacturers get this. They get that super cop power. So that is why today we will be talking about five awesome cars and that honorable mention, baby, that have all evolved just like me from a lesser and slower counterpart. And the last one on this list casually sits at 640 horsepower because, you know, why not? Let's go. I got the ideal shirt. What? What? The ideal shirt. Hey guys, as you guys have noticed, I'm wearing the ideal shirt. This is one of the OG shirts. Front and back, what's up? Anyway, we're about to do our first merch drop ever, so stay tuned to the channel. Keep checking in every single day. If you haven't yet, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're always on top of it, because we're gonna be letting you guys know real quick about the ideal shirt, baby. All right, enjoy the vid. Starting off this beautiful list today, we have the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo. Historically, Mitsubishi has taken unassuming sedans and turned them into rally car killers. And the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution, which has been offered in 10 different generations from 1992 all the way to 2015, is literally one of the best World Rally Cross inspired cars ever offered from any manufacturer ever. And many of you know the Evo as the Subi Killer, or by Subaru owners, Fresh Bait. The later 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th generations produced between 276 and 291 horsepower, racing up to 60 miles an hour in just about 5 seconds. And they came with that phenomenal all-wheel drive system which was the perfect weapon to stand up against those STIs. And here's the thing, the Evolution was so much cooler than the regular Lancer. And yes, it has been discontinued, though I don't really know why, but it will always have a special place in my tiny heart. And for that reason, Mitsubishi is one of the five car brands that got worse. So you might want to go check that out. But just a second, I think that the real question is, how much do they cost nowadays? Well, today we're gonna be digging into the cheapest Evo in the country, and well, that one is not this, uh, well, maybe it is this $3,500, no, it's this $12,000 2008 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo GSR. You can snag this in California, and oof, I have always been a fan of these. They are not bad. It has 132,000 miles. It's an 08. I mean, that's pretty cool. And for under 15 grand, you can pick up a Subaru killer. I, the <laughs> I just said Subaru killer. The Evo is a Subaru killer, which uh, the next car on this list is a Subaru WRX STI. And just like the Evo, the Subaru WRX STI was born from the deep forests of rally. Subaru has been competing race ready versions of its boring Impreza sedans for many, many, many years. And then eventually they began offering them to customers. What a concept. And the result, well, has been a worldwide phenomenon. While there's nothing wrong about the base Impreza with the NA 2.5 liter Boxer 4, I think that we can all agree that turbos make the world go round. The Subaru STI compares very closely to the Mitsubishi Evo we talked about earlier. Pop up that hood and you'll see a 300 horsepower turbocharged flat four smiling right back at you. 60 miles an hour comes in just under five seconds. That's fast, baby. Making it way more than capable. I mean, just check this out. I wanna ask you, would you rather take the STI or the Evo? Make sure that you pick carefully because if you picked the STI, you should go check out the history on the car over here. It's a good one. Oh, and before I forget, let's check out how much you can get an STI for. The first few here don't really run. Um, so this is actually the first one here at 10,785 that, I mean, isn't a complete basket case. And well, for under 11 grand, you can get a 2004 Subaru STI. Not a bad looking car. I've always loved these interiors and uh, the seats actually grip really well. Some of the 04s came without radios, I believe, but overall, I mean, this could be a lot of fun on and off-road. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know we've all seen a Dodge Neon at least once or thrice. I couldn't afford a real car because snakes invaded my trailer, so my stepdad gave me his Neon. And besides being cute, it really had nothing really going for it. It just kind of looks like your typical four-door sedan from Chrysler. See, Chrysler, well, they're, they're kind of weird. I mean, they built the Viper and they saw a ton of potential in this little Dodge Neon. And once SRT got their hands on it, they slapped a turbocharger and a few other goodies. And that is how the Dodge Neon SRT4 was made. Now, this little Neon that could was still somewhat unassuming, but it was a lot faster than you'd think. Yeah, the motor only made 230 horses and zero to 60 came in 5.6 seconds, but that's only if you kept them stopped. And we all know what can happen when you turn up the boost. And you know what's wild? Dodge wasn't done just yet because they came out with the race ready ACR version, which had lower, stiffer suspension and came with more meaty tires to grip the road. And believe it or not, this hopped up Neon became more or less a track monster. Now one thing, I think every single one of these has been modified to the moon and back. So if you were to pick one up, how much would it run you? Oh boy, I don't know about you guys, but uh, for under $6,000, you can get a turbocharged four cylinder front wheel drive neon that looks like, I, I don't know about you guys, but that seems pretty enticing. Yeah, like I said, they're all pretty much beat and modified, but hey, you know what? For under $6,000, I think this thing would be an absolute blast. Fiat, rather recently, reintroduced themselves to the American market with the Fiat 500. But a little history lesson is in store because about 25 years ago, Fiat, which literally stands for Fix It Again Tony, had these little cars that Americans absolutely hated. And so you know what? Americans stopped buying them, which put Fiat in this really weird predicament because no one was buying their cars. So, well, no cash coming in and they left the market. Fast forward to 2010 and Fiat has the 500, which is a cute car, but nothing special. And so Fiat decided to do something about it and they came out with the Abarth. And although this turbocharged engine doesn't necessarily make a lot of horsepower, yeah, not a lot of horsepower at all, at only 160 horses, the exhaust note that comes out of these things is legendary. I mean, legendary in the fact that it, it kind of sounds like a chainsaw that you just rev up and then throw into a pond. <laughs> Guess what? Because it's such a little car, zero to 60 comes in decent 6.9 seconds. I mean, they're zippy. You can definitely hear them coming and they aren't particularly hard on the eyes. So how much do they go for? Well, we're in a little bit of a situation because a 2012 Barth is under six grand, which is just like the SRT4. So which one do you pick up? Do you pick up this little guy? Which, I mean, looks, looks fun. At least you can parallel park it quite well. I mean, it also sounds like a chainsaw in a pond, but it doesn't look bad. Or do you pick up an SRT4? I don't know. I think the SRT4 is a winner, but then again, it's an old Chrysler. Anyway, under six grand for a 500 or Barth. Now, before we get to easily the fastest car on the list, here is the honorable mention, baby. <laughs> Okay, real quick, close your eyes. Have you ever seen a non-GTR Skyline? Yeah, me neither. No, I have, and guess what? They're just not that interesting to look at. And just like their looks, they're not very capable either. I mean, no supercar power. And just like any regular car, I mean, you can always attempt to mod it, which it takes mods okay, but the GTR is legendary. Yeah, like, I mean, you know, Godzilla. And it cranks out 276 horses from its twin turbo inline six. Zero to 60 comes in around five seconds, depending on the generation. The R32 sitting at 5.6 seconds, R33 at 5.3, and R34 at 5.2. And it's just complete BS that it had 276 horsepower because it didn't. So why did Nissan say that it had 276 horsepower? Because you probably know about the unstated gentleman's agreement in Japan, where no car could be advertised 
advised having above 300 horsepower for safety reasons. So uh, let me know down in the comments, do you think that they did 276 because 299 would have been too close to 300? 276 was kind of the, the perfect number that it wasn't close at all to 300, but it seemed believable. I don't know, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on this gentleman's agreement and the 276 horsepower, which the R32, R33, and R34 all had 276 horsepower. Not, because here's the thing. All you have to do is pull the itty bitty turbo restrictor to unlock 300 plus horsepower from the engine. And with just a couple bolt-ons and a tune, 500 horsepower is just around the corner. And well, you know what that means. Now you can already import the R32 and the R33 is right around the corner. And if you wanna know the secrets on how you can import one early, go check out this bid. But if you wanna get an R32, how much can you get one for? At least on CarGurus, which is my preferred site to check out cars and prices. I like all the features on it. There aren't a lot of GTRs available right now and the cheapest one in the nation on CarGurus is 36 grand. And this black one here is not so bad. I dig, I like the wheels, definitely aftermarket. But then again, you know, it's probably done some drifting over in Japan before it came over here and used up all the rubber on the stock one. So there we go. 51,000 miles, 92 Nissan Skyline GTR for under $36,000. I think I'll wait for an R33. <laughs> with an available 556 horsepower on tap, pumped out by a supercharged V8. Oh, and let's not forget the manual transmission, which uh, that is straight up super cop power. And it comes in both a sedan and an optional wagon body style. That is cool. And Cadillac just keeps upping the performance because for 2019, it now has 640 horsepower. I mean, are burnouts even optional on this thing? Now let's not get ahead of ourselves because the first generation CTSV took on the BMW M5. And I'm sure that most of you know what the Corvette Z06 is. Well, the CTSV is literally a four door version of the Z06. It literally shares the exact same 400 horsepower LS6 V8 mated to a T56 manual six speed. I personally think that this Gen 1 CTSV is uber cool or even ideal. So how much are you gonna have to pony up to grab one of these? CTSV, baby. Well, for under 11 grand, you can pick up this 2006 CTSV, which I mean, it's a Cadillac. I mean, there's a couple of small upgrades I would do to it, but luxury performance, it's a supercharger away from being extremely badass. And since we're on the topic of powerful cars with insane top speeds, check out these six cheapest cars that go over 150 miles an hour or check out what YouTube recommends you watch next. Oh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. But either way, you can't lose. And as always, keep living that ideal lifestyle.